Hello and welcome back to another video on differentiation. In today's video we are going to be looking at closed intervals and how to work out the maximum and minimum values of a curve. So what is a closed interval? Well sometimes it's necessary to restrict the part of the graph that we are looking at using what we call a closed interval and sometimes this is also called a restricted domain. So we're going to write a little definition to say what we mean by closed intervals. So we would call the maximum and minimum y values can be either stationary points, so usually these will occur at um, stationary points, which we have talked about before. So it'll be very important for today's video. So if you've not checked up on stationary points, be sure to do so. So they can either be at stationary points or they can also be at the end points of the closed interval. So today we're going to be working with working out the maximum and minimum y values, which we say are either going to be the y values of stationary points or at the endpoints of a closed interval. And I'll show you with a graph now what we mean by a closed interval. So here we have a sketch of a curve, which we can see looks something like this. And on it we have labeled a few things. The first thing up here is we have is the maximum point. But why is this the maximum point here? Well, it is the greatest y value on the curve, which is between these two dotted lines that meet at minus two on the x-axis and six on the x-axis. Now, these dotted lines are simply restricting the graph, so it must be in between here. And this is called a closed interval. So we would say that the values between here and here are all within side. So that is going to be the closed interval, which is in between these two lines. So the minimum y value is going to be the smallest y point on this curve between these two lines. And we can see it's right here at the end. So instead of being down here at this minimum stationary point, it's at the end of the end is the end point of the graph because it's smaller, as we can see, it's lower down than the turning point. So as you can see, sometimes the maximum and min minimum y values will be either stationary points, as we can see up here, or the end points of the closed interval. Now we're going to do a bit of a lengthy example here. So you'll have to bear with me while we go through checking if the stationary points are the maximum and minimum values or if the endpoints are the maximum and minimum values. And what I mean is we have a function which is defined for the values where x is between minus one and four. So we know that if we sketch the curve, it will be between the two dotted lines. Let's say it looks something like this. We know that the curve will be between these two dotted lines between minus one and four, this is obviously not to scale, but that's me just showing you what that bit there means. And the curve is given by the function f of x equals 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we are asked to find the maximum and minimum values of f of x. So we know that the maximum and minimum are the um, y values where it's at the, the highest point and the lowest point. And we said they are either at the stationary points or the end points. So the best thing to do is to sketch this curve and work out stationary points and the end points. So let's do that. Let's begin by sketching the curve. Now, as we know, to sketch the curve, we need a few things. The first thing we need, or the most important thing we need, and especially in this case, are the stationary points. So we'll work at the stationary points. And we know stationary points occur when the derivative is equal to zero. So we'll start off by working out the derivative 
f dashed x. So if we differentiate this, we're going to get 6x squared. Then we're going to get minus 10x minus 4. And this is our derivative. Now the next step we need to do is we need to write that stationary points occur when the derivative f dashed x is equal to 0. So we'll do that just here. We'll say 6x squared minus 10x minus 4 is equal to 0. And we can do a bit of factorization here. We can take out a common factor of 2 to get 2 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Just makes it a bit easier for us to um, split this off into two brackets because remember when we do this we're wanting to work out the x values so we're going to have two brackets here and it looks like one's going to have 3x and one's just going to have x we're trying to make minus 5 with factors of 2 so it's probably going to be 2 and 1 and it's going to be 3x plus 1 and x minus 2 and you can check this by expanding them yourself right now. So we know that either 3x plus 1 equals 0. So we'll just write this all out. So therefore, x is going to equal negative a third. Or we know that x minus 2 equals 0. So x is going to equal 2. And these are our two x coordinates for the stationary points. So therefore, to work at the coordinates of the stationary points, we also need the y values. So we want to work out what f of x is, where we substitute in the value x equals negative a third and x equals 2. So we'll say when x is equal to negative a third, f of negative a third is going to equal 2 times a third cubed minus 5 times a third squared minus 4 times a third plus 1. Now if this was in a calculator paper you could simply put that into your calculator uh, which I have done so and I can tell you that this is going to give you 46 over 27. But if this is not a calculator paper not to worry just expand these by making this 1 over uh, 27 um, and then this would be 1 over 9 and this would be well, 4 over 3, which is 4 over 3, and then just multiply all the scalars and add everything together, and you should get 46 over 27. And we also want to look, I'm going to do this up here, when x equals 2, what is the y-coordinate of this stationary point? Well, we substitute in 2, it's going to be a lot easier. We'll have 2 times 2 cubed, minus 5 times 2 squared, minus 4 times 2 plus 1 and again if this is a calculator paper you just plug it all into your calculator and you should get that it equals minus 11. So therefore the stationary points are first one is negative 1 third 46 over 27 and the second one is minus 11 and sorry, not minus 11, it's 2 minus 11. So we said that the maximum and the minimum values are either going to be at the stationary points or the endpoints. So we know that 46 over 27 is currently the maximum value that we know, and minus 11 is currently the minimum value that we know, but we don't know if in when the graph has been sketched, if these are the maximum and minimum points because we have not yet worked out the endpoints. So we need to work out the endpoints next, but before we do that, we'll just work out the nature of these two stationary points, because we are going to sketch this graph. So if we sketch the graph, we know we need to work out the two natures of the stationary points. So let's put that through. We'll do x. Oops, that is not a very good straight line. Neither is that. Much better. So we're going to work out um, f dashed x as well. In fact, this is a really big line. Only needs to be about that. 
We want to work at the derivative. And we want to look at what the graph is going to look like. So we want to look at the first stationary point, which is going to be negative a third on the x-axis. And the second one is 2. This is what we did in our stationary points video. Be sure to go and check up on that if you can't remember all of this. So we want to look at the derivative as it approaches and leaves these two values. So if we substitute in negative a third into our derivative, we should get zero. Same with two, if we substitute it in, we should get zero. And if we pick a point very close to negative a third, so we know negative a third is um, a zero point, is negative 0 0.33333. So if we pick, for example, minus, we could do minus one over four, because that's going to be just after it. And if we look at one after it, it's going to be minus um, we could do minus a half, for example. And then if we look at the value just before 2, we could look at uh, 1.9, sorry. And just after 2, we could look at 2.1. And if we substitute these both into our calculator for the derivative f dash x, if we substitute in minus a half, we'll find we get a positive value. Minus a quarter will give us a negative value. 1.9 will give us a negative value and 2.1 will give us a positive value so we can sketch what those are going to look like increasing here so we can see that the stationary points minus 1 over 3 46 over 27 is a maximum turning point and we can also see that the stationary point 2 minus 11 is going to be a minimum turning point and now using these we can sketch the graph to try and work out what the endpoints are going to be now so I have rubbed out my working here, but when you guys do this, make sure to keep your working. So we've worked out our two turning points or our stationary points, but we also need to work out the end points before we sketch our graph. So we know that the end points are going to occur at the x values minus one and four, but what is the y value going to be at that point? Well, we just need to substitute in minus one and four into our function f of x to work out what they'll be. So we'll say that these are going to be our end points. And we'll say that f of minus 1, which is equal to 2 minus 1 cubed minus 5 times minus 1 squared minus 4 times minus 1 plus 1. And again, I'll just tell you now that this is equal to minus 2. And the second point is going to be um, f of 4 which is equal to 2 times 4 cubed minus 5 times 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1, which is going to be equal to 33. So our end points are going to be minus 1 minus 2 and 4, 33. Now before we sketch our curve, we can already see by comparing the turning points, the stationary points, and the end points, we can already see which value is going to be a maximum and which one's going to be a minimum by looking at the four y coordinates and seeing which one is the greatest. Well, we can see 33 is going to be the greatest. So this point y equals 33 is going to be the maximum value and we can see the minimum value is going to be negative 11. Now we could just write that, but I'm going to show you the graph first so we can visualize how these are the maximum and minimums. So let's plot all four points. Our first point we're going to plot, minus 1, minus 2. Let's just say that's somewhere down here. Now because we have that the uh, interval closes at minus 1, we can put dotted lines up here. Remember at the end points, they will always be on 
the x coordinates of the endpoints. The next point we're going to plot is going to be minus a third, 46 over 27. So that's going to be somewhere, let's say, up here. Plot minus a third, 46 over 27. And our next point is going to be, we'll go 2 minus 11, which is going to be somewhere all the way down here. And our last point, which is the final end point, is going to be 4, 33, which is going to be somewhere all the way up here. And again, because this is the end point, there's going to be a dotted line all the way down here. So we know that our graph is between these two lines, which are the closed intervals. So if we connect the dots, we can see that this point up here, which we said was a maximum turning point, we know it's going to turn like that. Now we haven't worked out the, the y-axis intercept, but we don't need that for this question. So we don't need to worry. And here we are told that this is a minimum turning point. So this is going to curl back round. And again, we don't know the x-axis intercepts, but we don't need it for this question because it doesn't ask us to sketch the curve. I'm just sketching it here roughly so we know what it's going to look like. And here we can clearly see that this is a minimum and this is a maximum. So when we're writing our final answer for what the maximum and minimum values are, we would just say that the maximum value, and we said these are the y values, so the max is going to be 33. And we would say the min value is, and we can see it's minus 11. Now it's also important that you want to say which occurs at, and we want to say the x coordinate when it's this point and this point here. So when it's 33, x is equal to 4. And when it's minus 11, we'll say which occurs at, well it's minus 11, x is 2. So there we go. And this is our final answer for this type of question. So a lot of working done here. You don't need to sketch the curve. It doesn't actually ask us to do it. But I've done it in this question just so you can visualize why these are the minimum and maximum values. Now remember, they don't have to be at the stationary points. We can see here the minimum value is at the stationary point. However, the maximum value is at the end point because this point up here is greater than this turning point up here.